And while millions of Ukrainians are still attempting to flee the fighting, one Israeli living in Ukraine was able to safely make it out of the country and back to Israel. Joining us now is Peter Kolomiet, general partner at SIDVC, with his journey back home. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. So what was the situation like back in Kharkiv before you left? It was a pretty good situation because it's a beautiful city with very good citizens. I have company, 250 people there. We have these couple exits and we have very bright future just before the day the war started. And I understand, I mean, Kharkiv is a city that we've heard a lot about that's been bombarded heavily by the Russians. I mean, were you still there when the city was under attack? Yeah, I was there for 14 days. And it was crazy because every day it's like surprise because every day you see bodies uh, uh, on the street, you see houses that was destroyed, you see people that's crying. It's uh, I didn't see, I never see such things. It's, it reminds me Aleppo maybe in Syria, but it's crazy because you see like even childrens, the dead childrens. It's unbelievable what what you see. <laughs> it's hard to explain. And when did you decide to leave? When I got a uh, uh, bullet in my window and a uh, bomb was attacked one of my, uh, like my apartment, I didn't live there, but still it was my apartment that I, I decided to leave because it was too dangerous and it was the right decision because it's, it's like crazy because you don't have, uh, you don't have a place to be safe because for example, in Israel, you have uh, places where you can hide from bombs and you have, uh, like shields that can protect you from uh, rockets. And in, Israel, in the Ukraine, you don't have nothing. And it's pretty scary to be there because you know that every day it can be your last day because it's like I'm, I'm just luck that I didn't get uh, hit by a bomb. And I mean, tell us about the evacuation itself. I can't imagine that it was an easy one crossing the border. It was pretty hard because uh, uh, they stopped me. They thought that I. I saw the Israel pa passport, but because I had uh, some other uh, uh, passport, they thought that I can be spy, and uh, they investigated me for 18 hours. And it was pretty, pretty hard, because even they put a gun to my head. But uh, in the end, it's and pretty well. And I'm here in Israel, but it was very, very hard, because uh, I believe it's, it's they, did, they did their work, but still it was pretty hard to live. And just because I did so many things to Kharkiv and they speak with spoke with persons that they know, that they can uh, say that they, I help them, I help uh, to their family, this is what saved my life. Because I don't think that I will be here if, uh, they, if I didn't do everything that I did. And I mean, how was the journey from uh, Kharkiv to the border? Were you able to, to get there smoothly? I mean, were there obstacles on the way? Can you tell us a little bit about this journey? Yeah, I drove to, uh, from Kharkiv to border of Moldova. Uh, it was like 42 hours of stride driving because it's huge traffic jams because so many people left Kharkiv and they live in from the bombs. and. Uh, it's totally understandable because it's crazy to be there because you see cars, like when you go in, in the morning to the street, you see a lot of uh, cars in fire because in the night, because uh, Russian use non-conventional bombs and it's bombs, it's like half radius around half of kilometer. And even if your car like matters, hundreds of meters from there, they still get uh, hit. And it's crazy. This is why so many people left and uh, just you have huge, huge traffic jam. For example, uh, in the border of Ukraine and Moldova, you need to wait at least eight, from 8 to 12 uh, hours to get to the uh, passport control. And it's like unbelievable because you don't have toilets. There's a, there are some volunteers that help you with coffee or tea, but it's still it's crazy that you need to sit in a car for such a long time. But you don't have other choice because you don't have place to stay because every Kharkiv, for example, is one million people, more than one million people. And they like 90% of city left and they are now trying to or exit to Moldova or to live on other cities. And it's crazy because you don't, you can find an apartment. So this is why you need to sleep in a car. It sounds like an incredible journey. We're glad that you're back in Israel safe. Peter, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. ILTV Plus, your news from Israel and more 24-7. Start your free trial today. Subscribe at ILTV.TV and watch from any device.